Let's try the, to, to, to make this a stand-up comedy show, huh? Okay, so I'm gonna tell you three stories. I'm, ho I'm hoping you're gonna relate. And the first story is about two cells. Now, those of you who know anything about biology know that uh, after um, an egg cell and after a sperm cell unite to make a union, um, they start dividing, right? And what happens is you start off with a single cell and then two and then four and then eight and then 16 and 32 and so forth, on and so forth, because my math is not that great. But <laughs> actually what happens is that some of those cells go to one place and other cells go to another place, right? So for example, one cell can grow up to become a neuron. It's a very nice position. Um, you are in a kind of an executive position, right? You give out orders, you receive input, you think about it a little bit. Well, you're a neuron, of course, you, <laughs> you should think. Um, and you make a decision. Um, your position is awesome because you're protected, right? Neurons in our head are below the skin and below the, a little bit fat and a little bit bone and all of that, so it's an awesome position to be at. Not only that, but you're supported by, by all those glial cells, right? Uh, much like executives in an office, like Jeffrey, would you mind bringing me, me a cup of tea? Or what was that name of the servant, servo or whatever? Would you like to turn out on the lights or turn off the lights or turn on the TV, etc., etc., etc.? So it's a beautiful life, and not only that, but your pr protection goes so far that in the brain there is this thing called blood-brain barrier, that actually inhibits or protects you and, and doesn't allow certain molecules to come in. Now for medicine, this is extremely problematic because that means that sometimes we have trouble letting drugs into the brain, right? Um, but for the brain, it's awesome because it sits there in an executive position, right? It relaxes, it has a nice place, it has a very good job, highly paid, awesome. Not everyone is that lucky. Another cell goes to a different location and becomes an epithelial cell in the stomach. Right? Uh, a more difficult place to be, right? Everything is coming in and out and in and out and in and out and hopefully in one direction and not the other. But the thing is, there's a rush and you're constantly working, constantly being bombarded with new and new and new and new and new work. Um, apart from that, you also have to fight subversive activity, right? Um, we ingest bacteria, we ingest toxins, etc. And there's this little bugger called Helicobacter pylori uh, that's really prob problematic for us. Why? Because it has evolved with men in a way that, okay, I come here and I hide in the mucus, leading a very nice life, enjoying myself, and like bacteria, I multiply, right? And not only do I, do I multiply, I also communicate with my fellow Helicobacter pylori, right? So when I'm alone, I'm hiding and I'm leading a good life. But when there is a lot of us, we do mayhem. We create ulcers. We create problems. Not only ulcers, okay, if you drink too much coffee like I do, <laughs> you also have some regrets. You can get an ulcer, but you can create cancer as well. Cancer can develop from that. And what happens then is that when cancer grows and metastasizes, the brain cells get injured in a way as well. Not directly, but they do. So the life of this cell is more like an ore miner in a mine. It's a difficult job. He also always has to be vigilant and strong and tireless and fearfulness and, and so and so. Right? It's not an easy job. Now, the second story is about two embryos. One is born in a very nice place. If this seems familiar, you've probably seen it on your desktop, <laughs> right? Um, it is born and it is protected. You have some nice wind turbines, you have nice bike lanes, you have nice parks. Here in Rijeka, you have something that we in Zagreb don't, which is the sea. <laughs> That's why we, we come the, here as often as we can. And apart from pr for protection and apart from infrastructure, we also have support. We have our teachers. We have our doctors. Uh, we have our mothers, our fathers, our grandparents. We have budak makers, right? 
We are protected. And we also have our defenses. We build, out, uh, build up borders to protect our way of life. Our children are safe. But the thing is, not every embryo is that lucky. Some people are born in places where infrastructure means having a roof over their heads. Um, support? Uh, if you're different, you're dangerous. You have to think like others think. You have to do what other people tell you. People become unhappy and they take to the streets. They riot. They try to voice themselves out. But there is also subversive activity here. Some go to the extreme. And where, when there is one or two of them, the society can deal with that. But they multiply. And at one point, they escalate. This is Syria, a country of 20 million inhabitants, 12 million out of which are displaced, 8 million abroad. This is Leb Lebanon, a country of, I believe, 4 million people and 1.5 million refugees. Let that sink in. This is Nigeria. Um, Boko Haram has killed more people than Daesh in the last year. This is Paris, a place where French citizens decided to go to the extreme. Never mind that we are all brought in the spirit of Egalité, Fraternité, Liberté. This is a place where someone's life was made in such a way that they decided to be extremists. It is a choice we make. Do we bring bombs or do we bring flowers? I like flowers because I believe that hate will only bring hate. And if we allow this hate to grow, we will strip ourselves of our ideals. It is very easy to say that we uphold certain values. It is very easy to dream of certain values. But what the real test is, are our actions. And we, when we strip ourselves of our ideals, we strip ourselves of our humanity. And even more, we strip, strip ourselves and others of our innocence. <clears throat> Third story. They say that um, peras pera adastra, at Latin, Latin, in Latin meaning uh, through the thorns to the stars. Um, the third story is going to be about ideas. The first idea is, goes up to the brain, to the land of dreams. And the great thing about that is that in dreams, everything is truly possible. Uh, you have great protection because if you need a castle, you will dream a castle up. If you need Prince Charming, of course, he will be there. He will be perfect. He will be on a white horse or in a white Jaguar. He will have a nice castle. He will be a true gentleman. He will know how to cook. He will know how to wash clothes. He will even know how to iron, right? And probably have a six pack. <laughs> um, everything is possible and whatever we conceive we feel good about it because we are making it happen in our dream state. Not only that, 
but the support present is amazing, right? Um, you can have beautiful landscapes, you can have people and heroes helping you, you can have a rainbow at the end uh, with a nice golden pot. You can achieve in your dream state everything your heart desires. However, there's a difference between dreams and reality. And when you have your idea, you need to challenge this idea with reality. Reality needs to come on knocking on your door and say, um, excuse me, uh, we are from the church of reality. Have you met reality this morning? Because life, sorry, because this is life. It's not easy. It goes in all different directions. And you're often challenged with chaos and, and there is this challenge of, of choice, the agony of choice. It is very difficult to decide. And in all this mayhem, it is very difficult to finally know the ultimate answer to life, the universe, and everything which you've already seen, I'm sorry for that, which is 42, right? The ultimate answer to everything is 42. But what Douglas Adams so beautifully puts in his work is that he tells us a story um, of the answer, and then finally in one book he says, but you can't know both. You can either know the question or you know, need to know the answer. And I think that it's a metaphor that tells us there are two ways we can lead our lives either by knowing the answer or by asking the questions. For me, people usually say you always need to know how to um, ask the right question. For me, this is not really true because asking question is only job or life half lived. I want to live in the answer. So sometimes I don't really care what the true question is. Some, sometimes I want to feel my gut and feel, uh, and feel my inner drive and just go for that answer, just to act. Um, <laughs> life is hectic, so um, if we, sometimes when we, when we know something is right, we are stopped by all those million things that are in, a, in our way, and the problem is that once this happen, happens, that happens, right? So this says, okay, we've, we have this x-ray, and uh, the, the nasty thing is that your leg is broken, but we also have Photoshop, <laughs> so we'll give you a quick fix and you're done. Um, I, I think that every medical student or every student in general has felt this, right? I personally don't do this. I, I just bought a laptop looking more or less like this, but I like to uh, go to my childhood face and build a pillow for it. That's much more convenient and much more uh, cozy and comf comfy. Why? Because reality is nasty. Reality is like this mean old dragon that, that constantly fires upon us and that constantly makes us fear life, fear living life to the fullest. But the thing is, we don't have to be afraid. Great men said there is nothing to fear but fear itself. Fear is what, is what blocks us. And it is up to us to deny that fear access. It is up to, to us to say this, uh, brave men did not kill dragons. Brave men rode them. And quite honestly, I'm happy to be able to say that I was born in the land of adversity. I was born in Croatia, in, well, back then it was uh, a part of Yugoslavia, so I remember the war. Uh, my family was influenced by the war. I did not have it easy. Um, I'm still a medical student, and I, if you do some math, <laughs> you, will, you will remember that um, if I was born in Yugoslavia and still a med medical student, then uh, come on. But the thing is, thank you for <laughs> reminding me, but, but the, the thing is that that's life. That is life. And the only choice that I am able to make is go for that dream, act, try to enjoy myself, fight adversity, fight the dragon, and then not slay the dragon, but ride the dra dragon. 
ride the dragon like all the great men that did something. Some of them that spoke about that over here. In a couple of years, like, hopefully we're gonna be peers, right? So I'm gonna, oh yeah, I did something as well, right? Um, there's another quote saying, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. So when the society tells you this is impossible, remember that impossible in English can be split into I am possible. When the society tells you you're 30 and you should not be a medical student, you know what, I'm leading my own life. Yeah, I had some regrets, but you know what, I've had a few, and then again, too few to mention. I did what I had to do and saw it through without exemption. I planned a charted course, each careful step along the byway, and more, much more than this, I did it my way. So the message I want you to take is that the dragon is very much real. The amount of, of human suffering on this planet is tremendous. The difference between simple men and great men, simple women and great women, is acting upon your dreams. So have a great life. Have your ups and have your downs. Uh, get down to help the one who needs your help. Fight for your ideals. And I truly hope that much like myself, in a couple of years, you will be able to say, yeah, I had some regrets, but then again, too few to mention. Thank you. <laughs>